This chapter describes how to strip, splice, coil and install optical cables. There are four parts. First, let's learn about the tool introduction and environment preparation. The construction team members take tools and materials to the site, unload them and move them near to the operational area. Inspect based on the checklist. These are seven common tools used in fiber stripping. These are the five tools and two auxiliary materials used for optical fiber splicing. This is the material required for the installation of the closure. Use safety cones and caution strips to isolate the area according to EHS site requirements to ensure the safety of the implementation. The scene is the optical cable connection of the closure in the manhole. Part 2. Optical Cable Stripping The purpose of this part is to grasp the correct usage of the cable stripping tool and strip optical cables skillfully. Grasp the structure of stranded optical cables and make the stripping operation correct at one time. Use the key for the manhole to open the manhole cover. Take out the optical cable after confirming there is no harmful gas in the manhole or any other safety issues. Use the tape measure to measure the length of the cable. The cable should be straight. Adjust the blade depth based on the outer diameter of the cable by using the longitudinal cable stripper. Facing the knife edge to the end of the optical cable, hold the handle of the stripping knife tightly with both hands and pull the knife along the cable axis. Cut the outer sheath of the optical cable from the top down, stripping about 400 mm length. Pay attention to the blade depth and do not damage the cable core loose tube. Use a pipe cutter to cut the optical cable horizontally. Place the optical cable between the upper and lower two rollers of the pipe cutter and turn the adjusting knob. Ensure that the edge of the telescopic rod touches the outer sheath of the optical cable. The distance between the edge and the longitudinal cut of the optical cable is 5 mm. Step by step, approach the edge of the knife and check the cutting area. Wait for the incision to be visible. Stop and loosen the pipe cutter. Do not damage the cable core loose tube during the cutting process. Use diagonal pliers to clamp the cable sheath of the optical cable. Ensure that the vertical cut angle between the pliers and the optical cable is 45 degrees. Crack the sheath with outward force. All the way back to remove the outer sheath on the other side in the same way. Remove the cable core straps and fillers at the cable cut. Cut 6 to 8 mm reinforcement core from the incision. At the loose tube, 10 mm away from the strength member, slightly scratch the loose tube vertically using a box cutter blade. The index finger is raised slightly from the bottom of the cut part of the loose tube. Split the loose tube from the scratched part, pulling out the optical fiber by pulling the optical cable at both ends. Use lint-free paper to remove the paste four, two to three times and take protective measures. Do not touch the ground with bare fibers so as to prevent them from being damaged by dust or sand. Part 3 Optical Fiber Splicing Based on the characteristics of the installation materials, 
measure and intercept the protective sleeve of the bare fibre with a proper length. Rooting bare fibre. Secure the cut ends with insulation tape. Insert the stripped cable from the inlet hole at the bottom of the connector box. Bind the bare optical tube with cable ties. Root the bare fiber to be spliced in the tray. Cut the redundant optical fibers based on the position of the bare fiber protection tube on the splicing tray. Install the sealing ring and the waterproof sealing accessories into the card slot. Fastening the nuts using a fastening wrench and seal the cable apertures at the bottom. Use a lint-free paper to clean the optical fiber. Insert the optical fiber into the heat shrink tube. Remove the fiber coating layer from the 125UM slot by using Miller pliers. The stripping length of the coating layer is about 3 to 4 centimeters. Clean the bare fiber surface with lint-free paper dipped in alcohol. Make sure there is nothing attached to the surface. Place the bare fibers in the coating layer of the optical fiber cutter to 15 to 18 millimeters. Push the cutter to cut off the optical fiber and open the cover plate of the cutter. Take out the optical fiber and complete the production of the optical fiber fusion joint. Do not touch the cut end face when taking out the optical fiber to avoid damaging the end and causing two cuts. Press the power button to start the splicing machine and enter the splicing state. Open the waterproof cover of the splicing machine. Insert the optical fiber into the V-shaped slot of the splicing machine. The length must be in excess of the V-shaped slot, but not beyond the electrode bar. Cover the lower pressure plate and close the waterproof cover. After the discharge splicing is completed, open the waterproof cover and push the hot melt protection sleeve to the pressure plate. Open the pressure plate and take out the optical fiber. Hold the fiber splicing section one at one centimeter and slide the thermal splicing protection tube to the splicing position. Slide the heat fuse protection tube into the splicing position. Place in a heating tank for fixing.
Take out after heating. Place the cooling tray for cooling. Keep your hands steady when holding the fiber, otherwise the fiber will be easily broken. Closure installation. Insert the spliced optical fibers into the fixing slots of the splicing tray in the correct color spectrum sequence. The rules of fiber management are first in the middle and then on both sides. Use the hot melt tube end as a starting point. Start the fiber coiling counterclockwise on the left. To coil a large circle around the rim of the splicing and termination tray. On the right side, the fiber length can be adjusted in a clockwise direction, which is convenient and quick. Avoid sharp bends and loops. Use multiple types of fiber spools based on the actual situation. Use the remaining fiber length and reserve space to coil around the fiber. Do not drag it. Use the round ellipse CC. Multiple types of graphic fiber discs. Note, equal to or more than four centimeters. Maximize the reserve space and reduce the additional loss caused by fiber coiling. Place the splicing information table in the socket of the splicing tray and fasten it. The connector information table is placed above the splicing information table. Use the cable ties of the connector box to bind the fusion information table and connector information table to the upper part of the splicing tray. Insert the base part of the closure into the closure cap. Use the plastic fastening clip to seal the connection part between the cap and the base. Then install the closure hanger on the cap body on the closure installation position. Use the cable tag marked with the correct optical cable routing information according to the cable entry direction. Use a red cable to bind the cable at a distance of about 5 to 10 centimeters from the inlet of the closure. The optical fiber tag should be suspended facing right. This is all for this chapter. Thank you.